so as I said, like it is the no new frequency panel, we try to bring traditional knowledge, which is valuable, together with the pattern recognition method of the core system, which really uh, is, tries to simulate our right brain function, uh, tries to simulate intuition. So we bring intuition together with knowledge, and <coughs> so w one of the uh, uh, very interesting and um, very old knowledge is the harmonic interference. So that there were always some a thought that there must be some very specific uh, proportions, and we'll find this um, in in uh, in many places of of nature. We find very interesting repeating proportions that apparently uh, f were worked out in thousands or millions of years of evolution to be ver um, um, very effective. Or maybe they were the beginning at the beginning, and everything was based on those proportions. So either one way or the, the other. And, uh, uh, and of course, everybody knows the golden mean. It's, it's, it's one of the most common of those proportions, but by, by no means it's, it's, it's the only one. There's thousands of, frequent, uh, of proportions that are um, found to be uh, very common, and of course there's the um, fundamental harmonics, which are integer proportions in, in frequencies, but even this, yeah, you can select this here, fundamental harmonics, instead of um, the golden mean, for example. But even this was found to be not perfect for, for example, for uh, the, the listening ear of a musician. So there's the well-tempered form of this, which is very slightly different proportions. And these were used by Bach in the well-tempered piano and so on. Um, but we can have to understand there is not one f one proportion, even the ones which are most considered most fundamental in, in music, they can be more approved, improved, or at least they at in in other um, other modes of thought and feeling and sensation, other proportions are more appropriate. So let's let's drop the idea that there's only one divine uh, proportion of sacred promo pro promotion proportion <laughs> some people even call them sacred pro proportions that's the idea there's one and there's only one it's like a, it's the dogma dogma brought to the science of proportions really and uh, when you choose one of them let's say um, the gold mean yes it it scans again here this set and let's start this and uh, let's hear how this how this sounds so it's the golden mean between those two proportions those two frequencies doesn't sound so golden no? <laughs> um, particularly it doesn't sound good if you use square but again this is um, Look, the same thing now with sign. Again, we have a gold proportion, uh, a divine proportion between those two frequencies. So it finds the frequency that is resonant, but then it uses the golden mean proportion to, f to uh, select the second one. So you always have a, uh, a golden mean proportion between those two frequencies. So this is a, a classical now example of how to combine left side with right side. So we use the left side understanding that there are certain proportions, and in this case the golden mean proportion is, is more meaningful in many cases, and then um, use the right side to find the other frequency, so the other, f the first frequency is found by the core system, that's the most resonant frequency in this moment, and then the second one that gives the interference is 
selected by the golden mean proportion and and uh, you can do this um, harmonicis mundi is for example the the proportions that Kepler was using to really come up with the uh, idea about the how the orbits of the planets are are going uh, going around the sun in what proportions the axis of this, the elliptical orbits are and he was really basing all this on harmonic understanding of his understanding of of music and and he actually took the more hermetic the more uh, older traditions to study this it was really a metaphysical process like also um, um, in, uh, Newton was also in the same way using the old traditions and combining them with his observations and this is really what I think is a, is a very very productive way combining uh, old tradition with, with the, the new observations, fresh observations, that's, that's another form of dealing. So now, again, don't be worried, you press only one button here, scan for resonant frequencies, uh, for, for resonant settings, and it, f it comes up with the most resonant setting. So in this case, it's dual frequency interference. That's what you had until now only, exclusively. It was basically using the core algorithm to find both frequencies on both channels. No knowledge included based on, on sacred geometry or uh, divine proportions. But now with this, you have the possibility to say, no, I, I think I'll, I'll think I'll want to uh, use here sequences. Sequences is here. This is the whole set of sequences that we have right here. There's the Fibonacci numbers, the harmonic OR numbers, harmonic primes, the Kepler tree of harmonics, the Leibniz harmonics, the Pythag Pythagoras snail, of Solfegio. Solf Solfegio, you maybe know, Horowitz, he made this a big, a big thing. This is just a, again a few numbers, and it's basically numbers that he made very fashionable for a certain time. Saying this is the the, the ultimate. That's the that's um, that's the, the the panaceum for everything. Uh, I don't believe in any of this. I I think there are some truths to it, but then use the core algorithm to find the most resonant ones out of these frequencies. And this is really the combination of DLE between... Uh, that's what we have to do our whole life. We have to use our knowledge. We have to use what we have been taught at school. We have to know our... use what we have uh, built up in experience over time. But then we have to bring in the intuition of the moment, and that's the right brain to combine it. And so if you do one or the other alone, you are not going <laughs> uh, in, 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 in the best direction. And this is what we have now with the core. I show you now with the Solfegio. Um, again, set the time. And if you like sign more, you can do this. And I'll start. So this is all Solfegio frequencies only. And um then of course you can use those frequencies with the applicators and transform them not only in audio you can have them as as electric frequencies as magnetic frequencies light frequencies or uh, even plasma frequencies so uh, but here you have the mechanism how to find those two frequencies the most resonant ones and then um the difference between sequences and scales is that between uh, in scales there is a harmonic relationship between every every two um, notes in the scale. But with sequences, there is really only a relationship between one and the next one. Not not always. There's sometimes other sequences where there's more relations, but here. We use one that is found by the core algorithm, and then we use 
that's the that's the left brain aspect. We use the, the next one in the sequence as the one that we use in the second ch ch channel. So basically, what I sh sh said before for the for the uh, for the harmonics, we do here the sequences in this in the in the sense that we use on the one channel the one which was found to be resonant with the core algorithm and then the second channel always has the uh, the frequency that is the next in this in the sequence so the the solfeggio is not really 100% one of those those sequences because it has no order in the sense of all the other ones which are all mathematical sequences so here is an is an order this is solfeggio is not really a, a musical scale and it's not really a a sequence but we put put it here anyway so now one last thing I want to show you which is really interesting also is the binaural it's unselected panning channel panning channel means just the sound goes from right left channel goes from left ear to right ear and then the second channel goes from right ear to left ear and so back and forth um, which gives a very interesting effect and also has is an additional um, interference between the two brains, but the binaural is another, uh, well, about 30 years old idea that's based also on, really, on the Dealey principle. We have one frequency, and then we have another frequency that is just a little bit different. So this little bit difference gives a, uh, uh, creates a standing wave because the interf in there's an interference in your brain and it creates a, a standing wave in your brain and you hear actually uh, a tone that is much much lower it's the interference uh, between the two that gives a tone that, that can be only a few hertz as the resulting of the two frequencies that are m uh, in a much higher range so this is something you have to listen with a headphone also uh, but I give you just one taste here when we use this, the binaural it finds the frequency and it finds the little frequency difference for the second channel so I'll start this now to help 